Hello. So today we, we got a super exciting guest. Um, this per, put, yeah, this particular person actually has like a special place in my heart. Um, they've, you know, I think they've inspired, this person has inspired so many people, um, you know, across the country. And, uh, you know, I think they've also changed the tra trajectory of even like my life, particularly the mindset. When you think about like Tony Robinson, he, uh, you know, there's nothing that he can't accomplish. So, you know, you can pull up his social media. He has some of those sexy photos where he's like a bodybuilding champion. He's, uh, you know, short term mental like expert. And, uh, you know, I'm underselling really what he does, but I think a big part of it is really like the mindset piece of how he creates a vision and uh, sets actionable plans and gets things accomplished. So super excited. Tony Robinson, welcome to Find Your Freedom. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Omid, Lenny, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to dive into it. Omid, thank you for that that really nice intro, man. I, um, you know, probably to the extent that it causes you some stress, I think I'm just like chronically a, a big dreamer. And, and, you know, sometimes you dream big. And, and even if you only make it halfway there, you still make a lot of make a lot of ground, cover a lot of ground, man. So anyway, I'm excited to be with you guys and, and share some good stuff, man. Hey, Tony, once again, great. Hey. It's an honor to have you on the Robinsons. Listen, if you're not following the Robinsons, I have zero clue on who you're following, man. You know, and looking at everything that you and your wife is doing is super inspiring, you know. Um, so, you know, um, before we jump into anything, just for the listeners, man, if you could just just give us a little bit about who you are and who the Robinsons are. Because in my yeah. mind, you the Jay-Z <laughs> and Beyonce <laughs> of this real estate Airbnb thing. Man, that that, you know, dude, I would love to be the Jay-Z and Beyonce of anything, you know, as, as well as I do. But um, yeah, I'm Tony, Tony J. Robinson is my name. I am the co-host of the Real Estate Rookie Podcast with Bigger Pockets. Um, I think we just crossed over like 15 million downloads in that podcast. So we're usually somewhere between like 30 and 40 on the business charts for for um, Apple and, and Spotify. So we, we get to touch a lot of lives and, and share a lot of amazing stories through that podcast. Um, my wife and I run the Real Estate Robinson's YouTube channel. Where we've kind of broken down our journey about short-term rentals. And then along with Omid, we run Alpha Geek Capital, where we uh, got a really big goal is to build a, a big, uh, big real estate business. Cool. So yeah, so super exciting. So you know, maybe you can just walk us through kind of like how you create these, uh, like the visions for like setting up your goals. And, and I, I think that's like a big piece that's kind of understated about you as far as like your mindset and, and how you set these goals. And maybe you can kind of walk through people like what you do and, and, um, like somebody who's, who wants to do something in real estate, like how do mm -hmm. they get started? Yeah, I, I think the, the vision piece, uh, is, is super important because you, you need, you need something to work towards. And I think, and I, I don't, I don't really know where this comes from, but I feel like having a big goal puts a lot of pressure on you to, to take action. And the bigger the goal, the, the more the pressure, the, the more action is needed. So, um, I like in our real estate business and hopefully you're okay with me sharing this. I mean, like, you know, not me, but you know, I, I kind of threw the idea out there. It's like, okay, what if we try and buy a billion dollars worth of real estate? And you know, that's, that's a big number that I'll, and, and my wife was like, why not 500 million? I was like, well, why not a billion? You know, it's like, why not go for more? And I, I just, I don't know, man. It's, it's like, I feel we have such a limited time, you know, on, on this planet. And it's like, what can you do? That's going to have the, the biggest impact with your time here. And for me, I love the idea of building things like that. That's just something I, I, I get a lot of excitement from, but also the goal is that once we get to a billion that we we sell it all off right or we at least have the option to and it's like imagine the good you can do with you know selling that much real estate so it's it's you know it's it's i get a lot of joy from building things but then it's also okay what kind of impact can i have afterwards when it's all said and done so that's that's always been the goal for me oh man listen tony that's awesome because vision is everything right yeah. and then tied a goal to it and then action to it is everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, could you give us just um, maybe like four to five tips on what you do and what the Robinsons do to make sure that you continue to progress and achieve those goals? 
Yeah, that's a that's a great question, Lenny, because it's easy to have the the idea, but like to to like keep things moving along on a regular basis, that that part tends to be a little bit more difficult. And so there's a there's a book and one of my favorite business books I've read is called Traction. Um, Gino Wickman is the author and um, he he talks about having this big picture vision for your business. But then it's like, OK, how do you take that big picture and, and move it down to something that's a little bit more tangible? Um, so for every different part of our business, we meet on a weekly basis and we kind of touch on, okay, what's the big picture and what are the smaller things we need to be doing on a weekly basis to be moving towards those goals. Um, so like every week, me, Sarah and Omi, we sit down and, and talk about the, the goals we've got in our business. We've got a cleaning company. I sit down with our, our ops manager for that business. We talk about that. We have our coaching program. We just launched I have a meeting where we sit down and we talk about that. Um, our operational, uh, manager and our, our business, we sit down and talk about those goals. So we have a, a, a touch base every week where we look at KPIs and we say, okay, what are the, the tasks that we should be taking to kind of keep moving towards our goals? So you, you have to have some kind of regular touch base, some kind of regular cadence for reviewing your progress. And the, the, the biggest piece for me is, is the data and the KPIs. Like every part of our business, I try and say, okay, like what are, what are the things that we should be tracking? So for example, in our, in our operational side of our business, we track our booking lead time. We track our occupancy. We track our, um, our rankings in Airbnb and Verbo. Um, we track our review scores. Like we look at these numbers on a daily basis to gauge the health of our business. And that helps us make decisions on, are we tracking towards our goals or, or are we not? So, um, like somebody like me or like the average, let's say the average person there, they get overwhelmed by just hearing some of those things. So like you're, you're known for, to be like a systems guy. So like walk me through like why systems are important in order to be able to do that and, and how you're able to time block all those things. Cause it's like, wow, like you're, you're, you know, I don't want to glaze over this, but you're saying you're, you run this business, that business, this business, you run a podcast. Mm -hmm. Where's there the time to do all this? So yeah, first let me say like ultimately, so let me take a step back first. Now I'll touch on like the, the system piece I made, but um, everyone has like a different disposition just by like their their own personal nature, right? Mm -hmm. And I am the kind of, and, and I think everyone needs to kind of do this own self-assessment to see where, where you kind of land. But like, um, I'm someone that likes structure. And I'm, I'm, I'm someone that just like naturally needs things to kind of not fit into a box, but I like repeatable processes like that. That's what makes me sleep at, at night, right? Is knowing that we have a system and a process in place. My brain is just wired that way. Like if like the disc profile, I'm, I'm like a super high C, which means I, I just like things to, to be orderly and, 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 and kind of, you know, in order. Um, so knowing that I like to make sure that everything we do hopefully falls into some kind of repeatable process. Right. Um, so like, as an example, I mean, we just took a property live and we all forgot that the gas didn't get turned on. Right. And we, we actually have a checklist. We have a property launch checklist in our business that outlines like every single step we need to do. We just, we, we didn't have the discipline like to go through that checklist to make sure. So I, I like to say, okay, cool. Here's, here's the big picture of everything we want to want to accomplish. What is the system that we need to support the achievement of that goal? Because we all have limited time, like in, in a given day. And I feel like the best way to make the best use of your time is by plugging it into an efficient system. And the more efficient your system, the better use you get of your time, the better use you get of your time, the easier it is to achieve your goals. So that's really why I lean on, I think the systems and the idea so much. So for someone that, that that's like looking to, to start out, right? Or, or someone that's like trying to build some kind of systems or processes into their own business, the way that I like to look at it is, okay, I'm not trying to document or systematize everything, but what is that 80, you know, how like the 80, 20 rule, right? Like what's the 20% of things I need to document to get 80% of the result. And if you think about, I don't know, like we just talked about like starting up a new Airbnb, there's probably a million little steps, but what are the, what's the 20% that gets me 80% of the way there. Right. And if we can focus on just doing those things exceptionally well, then it becomes a little bit easier. Then you start to document. Like I'm, I'm super big on Loom, L O O M. It's a, um, it's like a web browser plugin where you can just like click a button, record a video of you doing something on your computer, email it out to a bunch of different people. I use that all the time. I, I, I literally record like multiple Loom videos a week on different things that I'm doing because it's like, okay, if I'm going to go in and do this thing one time, 
let me record myself doing it. That way I can share with someone on my team or, or whoever else steps into this role and now they can start doing this thing instead of me. So that's like a super basic way to start building systems is just as you're doing things, record a quick video, save it away for later, and then you can pass it on to the next person you need to train. Oh, that's that's absolutely amazing. And systems is everything, right? Systems and processes. But before we even jump further in there, let's take a couple of steps back, right? Because, you know, I know that you had um, like like this real estate thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, how did you get started? You know, I, I, I know it's a little bit about your background, you know, and just for the listeners, you know, was this what you always wanted to do? Did you fall into this? Like, can you give us a little insight on how this thing got started for you? I was I was that kid growing up that always knew he wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, when I was in junior high, I would go to Costco and buy candy in bulk, bag it up, and then sell it out of my locker. Um, nice. When I was in college, I had a, a mobile tutoring business where me and two other tutors were driving around my town tutoring people in, in math. It's like, if you look at like my... Uh, like my online purchases from like the early 2010s, like I had so many different like URLs that I had purchased because I was just trying a different business idea, like, you know, every other month it felt like. So I always knew ultimately that I wanted to work for myself, that I wanted to build my own business. Um, it was just me trying to kind of figure out what that business was going to be. But growing up, my dad always preached to me the, the power of real estate. And he had kind of dabbled in real estate for a while as well. So I always knew that at some point I wanted to make real estate a thing. I didn't think it was going to be my main thing um, until I got a little bit older. And I said, OK, I've tried all these other things, these fad ideas, these, you know, make a quick buck type thing. None of those have worked. But here is real estate, which is this tried and proven method for building wealth and cash flow. And, 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 and so many people have been successful in doing this. If I just follow what these people are doing, maybe I can have that same success. So back in 2019, um, I bought my first real estate deal. It was out of state in Louisiana. Um, and uh, that, you know, just kind of snowballed into the next. After that first one went down, we started picking up some more and some more and some more. And, you know, now we're at, I think, what, 25 active properties right now on, on Airbnb. And I don't know, we'll probably be at 30 here shortly once everything else, once the dust settles. So it's it's been a, been a crazy couple of years, Lenny. Awesome. So like just just to kind of touch on the entrepreneurship, because I think uh, some people don't grow up with that or and they do the traditional mm -hmm. W-2s, but then there's a, a lot more information uh, out there or inspiration from entrepreneurs as far as like how to get started. So <clears throat> somebody who wants to just jump into real estate, like uh, they're looking for the home run, like what would you say to somebody like that who's just getting started or or even just slowly developing that entrepreneur kind of spirit? Yeah, I think, you know, a, a lot of people are afraid of entrepreneurship because they want the security that comes with having a traditional job. And I think based on the experience that I grew up with, I understood how little security you actually have with a traditional job. And that for many people, entrepreneurship can actually offer more security. So both of my parents thought they had stable jobs and yet both of them were impacted by decisions outside of their control. So my dad growing up uh, pretty much his entire adult life, he worked for one company. It was a, a trucking company that, you know, they were local to Southern California. He started off as like a dock worker and, you know, climbed the corporate ladder. He was a general manager for one of their locations. Him and my mom had two houses. They had their primary residence plus a rental. Um, you know, they, my mom was barely working. Like my dad was a bread. Like they, they were living the, the perfect American dream. My dad shows up to work one day after almost two decades on the job. And the owners of the business, his name's also Tony. They sit him down. They say, Tony, um, thank you for everything you've done. But today's your last day. Uh, the company's going bankrupt. Like everyone's getting fired today. So in the blink of my, in the blink of an eye, my dad went from this respected general manager to unemployed. Yet this was the same place he had dedicated almost two decades of his life to, right? And then my mom, she worked for the state. You know, how much more secure can you get than working for the state? And when I was a senior in high school, this was right around when the Great Recession was happening. And my mom uh, and, and everyone in her department got furloughed. 
So her pay got cut by like 30% in the blink of an eye because the government needed ways to save money during this recession. So I saw both of my parents who thought they had stable jobs, who thought they had security, both of them get negatively impacted and literally have zero control over what that decision was. And that stuck with me. So even as I climbed the corporate ladder on my day job, I always felt the sense of of not fear, but just like I was uneasy because all of my income was coming from this one place, from this one source that I had no control over, right? And I wanted to make sure that if things hit the fan, that it was Tony who was in control of what that income looked like, that it was it was Tony who was in control of, of the value that he provided to the marketplace and how he was compensated. And that got, it got further solidified for me because I remember my first raise I got from like my, my first like big boy job after college, right? And I busted my ass for a year. That first review cycle came around and I, you know, I walked into my boss's office. She was like, Tony, you've done an amazing job this year. Um, we appreciate everything you've done, the the late nights, the early mornings. We're going to give you your raise. And it was like one and a half percent raise. So I think I went from making like $68,000 a year to like sixty nine fifty, something super crazy like that, right? And I was like, man, this 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 can't be it. So that was like the really first switch that went off for me. Um, so I said, I want to be in control of 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 what my worth is. I want to be in control of the value that I provide to the marketplace. And I want to make sure that if this one income stream goes away, that I have two, three, four, five, six to make sure I can always provide for my family. So that was that was a big thing for me. And and my advice to folks is to understand. Sometimes being an employee is riskier than being an entrepreneur. And if you really want to be in control, if you really want stability, then go and set up multiple streams of income. So that way, if one goes away, you still have a few others you can lean back on. Oh, man, that's that's beautiful. And, you know, just to unpack a little bit of that is journey, right? Mm -hmm. Like life is just about that. And there were some things that happened with your parents. There were some things that happened personally that mm -hmm. just said, you know what, this is just not, you know, for me, but mm -hmm. I want to talk about something else, which I think that you 100% nailed. And I believe so many people, including myself can learn from this is the Robinsons. Okay. You know, how in the world, because listen, I'm going to tell you listeners, if you're not following the Robinsons, let me tell you what you're missing out on. One, you're missing out on excitement. One, you're missing out on education. Two, you're missing out on some more excitement. And three, you're missing out on some more education because that's all it's about. How? Because it's a struggle for a lot of people to sit there and get their better half on board on what you are doing when it comes to you know, this real estate thing. So if you could talk a little bit on that, Tony, man, you'll help so many people. Yeah, I get that question a lot, right? Because my wife is also my, my business partner. Like, Tony, how do you get your spouse on board? How do you how do you get them to, to kind of be involved? The the first thing I'll say is that there's different levels of, you know, spouse being on board, right? Um, you have probably at one end of the spectrum is when your spouse is actively fighting you on building out your real estate business or whatever business it is you want to build out, right? The next level of that is, hey, I'm not involved, but I'm supportive or I'm indifferent, right? Like if this is what you want to do, do your thing, but I'm not going to play a role. I'm going to do my thing over here. And then on the other end of the spectrum is like, okay, hey, let's do this together. Let's build this out together. So I think what most people think about when they, when they say, I want to get my spouse on board, is they want that far end of the spectrum to say, I want my, my spouse to be my business partner. When really, maybe that isn't what you guys need for your relationship. You just need your spouse to be supportive and to say, hey, Lenny, hey, Omid, go do your thing. I'm not going to participate, but I'm going to support you and I'm, I'm going to be there for you, right? So I think that's the first thing is understanding there's, it's, it's a spectrum of, of involvement. Now, how do you get your spouse to, to kind of be supportive or, or maybe step into that role of being your business partner? First is that I think it starts with trust. Your spouse has to have trust and faith in who you are and your ability to succeed and your ability to commit to something and your ability to see things through. If you are someone who constantly starts things and never finishes them, if you're someone who talks about a lot of things but never takes action, if you're someone who plays the victim and doesn't take accountability, like your spouse 
whether they consciously know it or subconsciously, they can kind of tell that when you start talking about doing this next thing that you're probably not going to really do it. So will, should your spouse even trust you when you say, hey, honey, I want to take our life savings and put it into this real estate deal when every other thing you've done in the past, you've done half-assed. Like I wouldn't trust that person either. So I think part of it starts with you have to build trust in your spouse by saying, hey, I'm going to do this thing and then committing aggressively to making that thing happen. And when you do that over time, now you've built up that that trust with your spouse so that when you do say, hey, I wanna take 10, 50, $100,000 to go buy this thing or start this business, they say, well, you know what, Tony, you've been doing this, 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 and this, so I trust you when you say you're gonna do that. So I, I think trust is, is the first thing. The second thing is finding the part of the business that your spouse, if you do want them to actually be involved, finding the part of the business that speaks to their natural strengths. Because when I was doing long-term rentals, Sarah wasn't involved. My wife wasn't involved because she didn't really have enjoyment in anything that has to do with long-term rentals. It wasn't until we transitioned to short-term rentals that she she found her groove in like the customer service side of the business, right? And as the business has scaled, now she's gotten really good at like the design and the rehab elements. Like we just, we just redid a game room in one of our properties and dude, it's, I personally think it's the coolest game room I've seen in Joshua Tree. And my wife designed that from top to bottom, right? So it's like, can you find the part of the business that speaks to your spouse's natural interest? And then can you trust them to, to roam with that piece? Um, so that way they can kind of shine in their area of expertise. Oh, that's, <clears throat> that's pretty amazing. I mean, I just to kind of speak on that uh, game room. I mean, uh, I heard of like the vision of it and I was like, you know, enthusiastic, but you know, a little bit cautious. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, like it, it came out amazing. And so, you know, definitely, I think it's, it's interesting. Like there's a lot of people in the space who are, um, trying to figure out like what, what, like what role to kind of put their spouse in and what if mm -hmm. they just don't know, like, what if, how do they find out like what role fits? Um, because I think like Sarah's naturally kind of like over time kind of build different skill sets and things have kind of come more mm -hmm. natural where then she's kind of gravitated towards, but just to even just get started, like, how do you know, like, let's just somebody's never been in, in real estate and, or now they're like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to, what things I can do. And like, how do you even get started to even begin that process? I mean, there's always translatable skills, right? Like most people have developed some level of, of skills either through, life, business, whatever, like you've done something in another life that has skills that will translate to your real estate business or whatever business it is that you're looking to start. So for Sarah, like, for example, she came from the entertainment and events space. So naturally she had a high level of customer service because she was like the person who was working the green room at the late, late show, or she was like the VIP person at the, the big events that were throwing at like Madison square garden and Staples center. So naturally she had the ability to kind of be the face and interact with the public and, and do a good job with that. And then she was also just a super creative person, like just in her own life, she liked making funny videos and, and doing cool things, you know, putting things together. So like, she just naturally had this creativity just as a passion for hers. So it's like, maybe she didn't necessarily design properties before, but does the creativity that she have, does that translate? Maybe she's never worked front desk at a hotel before, but can the customer service experiences she had play a role in the business? So I think for every person, take stock of the things you do in your day job or just in life and not don't ask yourself, what are the things that I'm doing, but what are the skills that I've developed that might translate well into this new business venture and use that as your starting point to kind of decide what, what seat each person should sit in. Well, Tony, that, that is so great, man, because personally I struggled with that for years, you know, um, manager, uh, managed up to 200 people and I never gave it a thought that what I learned or was learning at the time would be transferable to mm -hmm. anything that I can do from an entrepreneurial perspective. So, you know, it's so great. So let me ask you this question, Tony, you know, um, you guys are um, full steam ahead. What continue to motivate you to keep moving forward? I mean, I'm pretty sure you've ran into um, a bunch of hurdles. Um, I'm pretty sure that, you're making good money, 
you know, like what motivates you to keep moving forward and want to grow to this $500 billion empire? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so funny, Lenny, because I've, I was, uh, I was talking with some people at, at BPCon. Someone asked me that same question and actually it turned into like a pretty deep conversation in, in that I think part of it has to do with just like ambition. And, and me not really being able to turn that off per se. And, and I'm just not good at sitting still. Um, but I, I think a, a bigger piece is, is fear. And it's a fear of not having enough. And when I say that, I don't, I don't want that to come across as like, you know, that I'm just like greedy or I'm, I'm looking for this certain dollar amount. But it's like, I think about all the different things that I want to be able to do in my life. And it's like, man, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough resources to make all of that happen. It's like, you know, as I, I want to buy my parents a home, that's a big goal for me. Um, I want to be able to take my family, like not just like my, my immediate family, but my entire family on a vacation somewhere that they've never been before. I want to be able to start a, a foundation, a nonprofit that helps young people of color build wealth long-term. I want to be able to like, there's so many things I want to be able to do. And it's like, how can I be able to do that if I don't have the resources, financial means to do that? Um, I, I also have this fear around, like, I always want to make sure that I have money in the bank to take care of my family in case things go south, right? Like, God forbid something happens to our real estate business, like how much cash do I have stocked away and, and how long would that cash last us? Right. So it's, it's this, it's this fear of, wanting to make sure that I can take care of myself and take care of my family, regardless of what issues, challenges, et cetera, come our way. And that fear is a, it's a great motivator in so many ways because you wake up every day and, and it's there. And I don't want that to sound negative, but that I think that is a big driver for me. It's just like, there's this pressure to make sure that, that, that I'm, I'm doing everything I can to make sure that, that I can do that, if that makes sense. So I, I, um, so let's say opportunity costs, because there's always like your time and, and what is the opportunity cost with, uh, something that you're participating in. So how mm -hmm. do you figure out, because, you know, you're in a position now where there's going to be so many things being thrown at you or opportunities and like, what is your thought process around like prioritizing and even like figure out opportunity costs as far as where you get the most bang for your buck for your time and what you're looking to accomplish. I, I think that as, as people become more successful and as their platforms begin to grow, like you said, I mean, like naturally more opportunities start to come your way. And I think part of what, part of what made me struggle as an entrepreneur when I was in my early twenties was that I was chasing every opportunity and not committing myself to being excellent at any one thing. And what I've realized now, um, in my thirties is that I've, I've got to make sure that I say no more often than I say yes, and really focus on the things that I want to be world class at. And, that's kind of the the lens that I look at now to make decisions. And, you know, when we first started this whole short-term rental thing, like I told myself, I don't want to buy anything else except short-term rentals for the next five years. And we're what, two and a half years into that journey right now. Um, and we haven't, we haven't bought anything else, right? It's been all short-term rentals and the amount of change and the amount of progress we've been able to make in that short time frame has been crazy. But imagine had we also been trying to, you know, at that point, buy apartment complexes or storage facilities or mobile home parks, or I wanted to do like, I don't know, like lease auctions or, you know, lease options or, you know, yeah. auction steps or like, you know, sub two, like all these other things. But it's like, hey, I just want to get really good at this one thing. So I think for people that are listening, if you can identify what is the one thing that you really want to become world class at. Um, and commit to that for at least five years, you'll make so much more progress. And if you're jumping around from thing to thing, now we have focused on short-term rentals and just by focusing on that thing, we've started to do some ancillary things to support that goal of buying short-term rentals. So we started flipping and rehabbing houses, but they're all turnkey short-term rentals. We kicked off the cleaning company, but again, that's to clean our own short-term rentals, right? Now we're looking at property management, but again, that's short-term rentals, right? So 
even as you get really deep, you start to see, man, even in this one thing, there's so many different ways for me to kind of attack and, and achieve that same goal. So um, it, long story short, I think most of us need to do a better job of saying no, of saying no, and really focusing on getting world class at, at certain things. And if some, something doesn't match with that thing you're trying to be world class at, that's where you say no. Oh, Tony, man, I love it, man. Listen, I have to compare you to Oprah. Right now, now I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> this it's is the because... first time I've ever been compared to Oprah, Lenny, and <laughs> I appreciate that, man. <laughs> Listen, you know, Oprah was as what's the number one thing, <clears throat> right? Is required, and you nailed it. It's focus, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why you know you and um, the entire team is having so much success because mm -hmm. of what you just said. One hundred percent focus. That's absolutely, absolutely amazing. But let me ask you, so. Give us three things that you find that is really enjoyable about living your dream. Ooh, three things. Um, I, I think the first thing is that I proved to myself that I could do it. When, when I was in my, you know, like a decade ago, I had so much self doubt around like, could I ever figure out how to make one of these entrepreneurial endeavors work like was it just a pipe dream or like could i ever really make enough money on my own two feet to support my family and my lifestyle and that doubt was real for a while so i think the biggest thing for me was proving to myself that i could that it is possible and that even though it 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 was hard it wasn't necessarily a complicated process to make that happen. And like you said, Lenny, as long as you focus and, and keep moving forward, many people can do the exact same thing that, that I've done um, and that many other millions of people have done to, to kind of build their own businesses and, and stand for themselves. So I think that's the first thing is, is proving to myself that, that it was possible. Um, I think the, the second thing is that I, when I, when I think about the life that I live today, it is almost exactly the life that I had planned for myself. Like if I go back to, I don't journal as much as I used to, but like if I go back to my journal from, you know, when I was whatever in my, in my twenties and, and I talk about where I wanted my life to be 10 years out, I am pretty much living that exact same life. And to say that is so amazing because there almost isn't anything about my life right now that I'm unhappy with. Like I, I wake up so exceptionally grateful for the life that I get to live. I'm, I'm grateful that I get to have an impact on millions of people through the podcast. I'm grateful that, you know, the, the number of messages I get on a daily basis of someone saying, Hey, I, I love your content. I watched this. I did this thing. I, I took what you said here. And that's always been a big goal of mine is to positively impact other people. And I, I get to do that on a regular basis. And, um, there, I mean, yeah, just the, the, the life I get to live is amazing. And I think the, the third thing that, gosh, I mean, there, there's so many, so I'm, I'm going to try and try and pick one that, uh, yeah, I, I guess the third thing would be, I, I love that I have the freedom to decide for myself. And so many people think they have freedom when really they, they don't like just, just because you have a big paycheck, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have freedom. You might have financial freedom, but you have no time freedom. Um, and there are people on the opposite end of the spectrum where they have time freedom, but they have no financial freedom. Right. Um, but I feel like I've been able to somewhat strike a balance between both of those things. And I won't say that I'm not busy. I, I feel like I am exceptionally busy, but I also have the ability to, if I wanted to, I could cancel every meeting on my calendar today. And just, it would be me who has to deal with those consequences, but it's not some boss is going to come down on me and say, Hey, Tony, you, you're fired, right? So the the freedom to have the ability to make decisions for myself without worrying about what else someone thinks is you you can't put a price on that. 
Boom. Wow. So, I mean, I think that's amazing. You And I think there's a lot of listeners who they have a lot of self-doubt. So you kind of mm -hmm. talked about that a little bit. Like, how do they overcome that? So, like, they have this vision, and but then they're like, can I really accomplish? I'm not Tony J. I can't do, I can't accomplish every goal and then some. So what would you say to that kind of listener who's, um, has these ideas is kind of dreaming, but then also then kind of pulls back and then never like pursues those dreams or, you know, some sort of vision. I, I think people, people, yeah. I, and I want to make sure I say this the right way. Every, there is no limit on what one person can achieve. Science has not yet found the upper limit of human potential. And every single person that I look up to, the majority, they are no more skilled or maybe they are more skilled, but their, their potential is no greater than mine. And I think once I realized that, that was the the thing that kind of shifted for me is that it's it's not necessarily that I'm not capable. It's that I, I just haven't figured out the right way yet. And I think as long as you continue to educate yourself, as long as you continue to build the skills that are necessary, as long as you continue to move forward, the chances of you succeeding continue to increase, especially if you go down a very tried and true path. Like think about why, why franchises are so popular. Why are McDonald's franchises so popular? Because McDonald's is selling a system. McDonald's is saying, we've already figured this out. We're going to sell you the system. And then all you have to do is learn the system and operate it. The same is true for success in almost any field of life. If you want to be successful at real estate, find someone else's system, replicate that system. And now you take control of those same resources and, and knowledge and skills and everything that, that they have. And once I realized that it was like, okay, what, what is the system that I feel like I want to get really good at? And for me, it was short-term rentals. So I think every person needs to understand that most success can be modeled or broken down into some kind of framework, into some kind of system. So it's not necessarily, can I figure it out? It's how, how much time do I need to put in to master that system and, and, and get good at that one thing? Oh my God, Tony, these, these last 37 minutes have been absolutely <laughs> amazing. Um, it, it's, it's, it, I'm just so happy that, you know, you were able to come on and, you know, what you're talking about here right now is just about that mindset change, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and saying, you know, Hey, you know, this guy might be a little more skillful than me, but, you know, I'm still able to sit there and do these things. And it's just telling yourself that, you know, so mm -hmm. from a mindset perspective and, you know, you do a lot of reading, um, like what book that like I'm, I'm a, I'm a brand new, you know, investor. I'm following the Robinsons. I'm loving everything that they got going on here, you know, and I'm ready. Like, like what is that first book that you will suggest to that person to read, to sit there and, start to take the actions that's required to move forward with their dream. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to give them a podcast and this isn't like a shameless plug, but it's, it's the exact path that I went down. I would say if, if you're new, you're looking to get started, especially in real estate, uh, listen to every single episode of the bigger pockets podcast, like the main podcast, there's like 700 some odd episodes right now. Um, then go listen to every episode of the Ricky podcast where like 300 and something episodes there. That's over a thousand episodes, a thousand hours of content. If you consume a thousand hours of anything, you are going to be pretty comfortable and pretty familiar with that, with that topic, right? Like think about a college education. When you go to college, most classes where you might spend two to three hours each week in a class, right? Somewhere around there, right? So two to three hours in a class, maybe you're taking four classes. Uh, what is that? Like eight hours a week. What's eight times 52? That's like 400 some odd hours a year, about 1600 hours over the course of a, a college education. You're, you're basically getting a college education just by listening to those 1000 podcast episodes, right? So that will be my first thing. Like when you're, when you're in the car, when you're at the gym, when you're on the treadmill, when you're 
you know, bathing the kids, whatever it is, like, let that go. Because what's going to happen is when you listen to the first 50, your mind's going to be blown. You're going to hear all these new concepts and you're like, man, I never thought that was possible. Who even knew that this was a thing? And you're like these, your synapses are going to be fired just because like all this new information. By the time you get to episode 100 or 300 and 500, what you're going to start hearing is slightly different stories, but almost a reiteration of the same basic concepts. And you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I, rem I remember this concept or, oh, oh yeah, I, I remember this thing. Oh, yeah, I, I remember this thing. And by the time you get to a thousand, you're going to be able to go to your friend and say, man, have you heard of the bird process? Or like, man, do you know what it means to go to go subject to? Or man, do you know what it means to go direct to seller? Have you heard of skip tracing? Like you're going to know all these things like the back of your hand. So my, my first thing is go out there, educate yourself, listen to the podcast. Most of the books I read today, Lynn, aren't even about real estate investing. Most of the books I read today are about building businesses. Um, so Traction was a great book. Clockwork, I love. Uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins is another fantastic book. Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold is another great book. Uh, Profit First by Mike Michalowicz is another great book. So, I mean, I, I can name a bunch, but my my advice, if you're new, start with the podcast, hear the stories, real people, and let that be your introduction. Wow. Wow. All right. So, Tony, um, what does it mean to find your freedom? So that's our po podcast name. What does it mean to be to find your freedom? For, for me personally, or just like in general? For you. What does that yeah. mean to you? Yeah, for me, finding your freedom, uh, I think means building the life that you've always wanted. And I, I feel super grateful to say that I feel like I found mine. I, I get to work with great people every day. I get, I get to build this amazing business with my wife. Um, I get to impact people on a daily basis. So for me, I mean, it, it is this life that I'm living, you know, like waking up every day is, is me living that freedom. Excellent. Excellent. So Tony, man, you listen, we can go on and on and on. So we would love to 100% have you back on. Um, we're grateful for it. But before we, you know, close this thing, man, tell everyone how can they find the Robinsons? Because I'm telling you, if you're not following the Robinsons. You must be a square from Delaware. You know? <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to sit here and be excited. So Tony, please lay it on us. Yeah. Um, so first you guys can find me on the Real Estate Rookie podcast. So um, just Google Real Estate Rookie and, and you guys will find us or search the, the business charts on Apple or uh, Spotify. On Instagram, I'm at Tony J. Robinson. Um, and then our YouTube channel is called The Real Estate Robinsons. My wife and I break down uh, kind of all the ins and outs of building the short-term rental business. Um, yeah, those are all the main places. And obviously, if you guys want to invest with us, alphageekcapital.com. Um, and uh, you guys can get some good returns on uh, some short-term rental investments. Cool. Well, Tony, well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And like Lenny said, we're going to have you back on. Um, we always end the, the podcast with, with saying a boom. So you ready to do a boom? <laughs> Uh, a, a Lenny style boom. A Lenny Salute. style boom. Yeah. 100%. On three, right. man. On three. Okay. One, two, three. Boom. boom. <laughs> hey, man, listen, listen, listen. Once again, we want to thank everyone for coming on. First and foremost, anyone we have on our podcast is not a guest. They are a friend. So Tony and the Robinsons are definitely friends of ours. And we appreciate every last one of you who listen who commented, who liked, who shared, who sent, hey, come and subscribe to Find Your Freedom to everyone that's in your email Rolodex. We appreciate you. We want to come back with more and more and more. So with that being said, please share, please comment, please subscribe, do any and everything that you need to do. With that being said, Tony, oh me, and Lenny the boss, we would like to say peace. Peace. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>